Individually, they're among the best skaters in the world. Now, for the first time ever, they will join forces to compete as international teams. World medalists headline Team Asia. The newly crowned world champion Evgenia Medvedeva leads Team Europe. And world silver medalist Ashley Wagner joins U.S. champs Gracie Gold and Adam Rippon for Team North America. Guided by legendary team captains, these teams represent the best from all four corners of the world. Today, they face off in Spokane, Washington at the inaugural Kose Team Challenge Cup. Hello everyone and welcome alongside Olympic champion Scott Hamilton. I'm Tanith White and Scott, this weekend the skating world is being introduced to a brand new event with the Kose Team Challenge Cup. 42 of the best skaters in the world competing not just for themselves, not even for their country, but this time for their entire continent. A lot of pressure, right? We're so used to seeing these athletes perform for themselves. Individual glory, individual competition, but this is a team event and the last thing you want is to be the reason your continent didn't win. A lot of pressure. So all the athletes are broken up onto three different continental teams. And Scott, starting with Team Asia, who do you see as a standout on that team? Well, Team Asia is spectacular in the singles events, especially the men. They're going to need a phenomenal performance from Boyang Jin, Chinese champion. He has four quads in his long program, spectacular skater. And recently, Shoma Uno from Japan became the first man in history to do a quadruple flip in competition. No one had ever seen one before. I'd never seen one before but he just laid it down and it was absolutely swish perfect again the men for team asia are going to run that team and hopefully give them enough points to succeed and now looking on to team europe who do you see as bringing the most highlights among that group of athletes well team europe is is really well balanced but for sure the, the recently crowned world champion Evgenia medvedeva she is perfect uh, she went from junior world champion last year, the first woman ever to, in her first year as a senior, win the world championships. Looking for flaws, there just aren't any. So she'll be the captain of that team for sure. And some of her stiffest competition should theoretically come from Team North America, our final team, and the ladies in that group of athletes. Well, Gracie Gold and Ashley Wagner are just going to have to take a night off from their rivalry and link arms and do the best they can to lift Team North America to a championship in front of this North America. American crowd. Well, with the new event, we also have a new scoring system to introduce to you, but Scott, it's pretty straightforward in this case. Yeah, each skater will perform one number, they'll drop the lowest score from each team, total scores are added together, and the team with the highest score wins. It's kind of cut and dry. <laughs> All right, well, earlier today, we had the pairs and the dance teams kicking things off for their teams, and we can take a look now at the current standings after those opening events, and you can see Team North America with a sizable lead over Team Europe and Team Asia, and really, one team that made the biggest difference for that North American lead are the current world champions from Canada, Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford. Let's take a look back now at that performance. Just last month in Boston, Megan and Eric won their second consecutive world title with a performance of this free skate that brought the entire audience to their feet and was one of the most memorable moments of the entire competition. Opening triple twist. 
Quest. Nicely done. Difficulty in this program is really high. Only team I know that does side-by-side -side triple Lutzes. Very difficult jump, especially because the timing is so unique. Oh, she stepped out of his. He hung on to his. She stepped out of hers. He hung on to his. to do extremely well. And not squeaky clean by their standards is still pretty darn good. Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford of Team North America. Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford. When we come back, more skating as the teams fight for the Kose Team Challenge Cup trophy. The CBS Sports Spectacular 2016 Kose Team Challenge Cup is sponsored by SunSuite Amazing Prunes, the feel-good fruit, CLR, trust your clean to CLR, and by Kose. 
Welcome back to Spokane. Here's a look at Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poge, winners of the dance event for Team North America. The complexity and the speed they carry across the ice and their steps is magnificent. You mentioned how close they've been to a world championship. The year they came in second, they were two one hundredths of a point from first place. So good. Beautifully done. You see the emotion there on Caitlin's face. This is a team that puts their heart and their soul into every performance. For Team North America, Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poge of Canada. And here's a look at the current team standings after the pairs and dance event. And you can see Team North America with a sizable lead at 259.04 points, followed by Team Europe, and finally by Team Asia. In today's Prudential Rise to the Challenge, we can break down how Team Asia can come from behind and make up this 57.08 point deficit to capture the trophy. Boyan Jin himself has enormous firepower to rack up points just in his quads alone. He is the only skater attempting four quads in his free skate. His quad LUTs can earn him up to 16.6 points. If he lands all four quads, he could tally 48.19 technical points alone. The youngest star of the Japanese team, Shoma Uno, can top the field with technical prowess. He's added a quad flip worth 12.3 points to his program since the World Championships three weeks ago. The quad flip plus his quad toe loop can generate 23.6 base value points. If both men can rack up the quads, they'll help their team rise to the challenge to win the Kosei Team Challenge Cup trophy. Let's go down now to the third member of our team, Tracy Wolfson. I'm here with Adam Rippon and Ashley Wagner, the best of friends. You guys train together. Now you get to compete together in a unique team format. How much fun have you guys been having this week? Uh, we've been having a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we were hanging out right before we got to the arena today. And I looked at Ashley and I was like, it's so weird that we're getting ready to compete together. in this same <laughs> event together. <laughs> Well, for you, you're coming off the performance of a lifetime at Worlds. How can you carry over that confidence into this performance tonight? I think I just kind of have to take a note from how I accomplished that program in Boston and just take it one step at a time. It's very late in the season. Uh, we haven't had incredible training time. So honestly, for today, it's one step at a time. Just see what happens. North America with the lead right now. Does that add pressure or does that take pressure off you? You know, I think our teammates are going to be out there supporting us no matter what, and I think that we're going to do our best to deliver the best skates that we can today. We wish you the best of luck today. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Coming up next, two-time U.S. champion Gracie Gold.
Never miss a moment of the action with the CBS Sports app. Every play, every game, and every highlight right as they happen. Download the CBS Sports app now. Welcome back to Spokane and the Kosei Team Challenge Cup. Representing Team North America, Gracie Gold. And on the ice now, a face and a name most everyone in this arena knows very well. It's Gracie Gold. The current and two-time U.S. champion here competing for Team North America. She finished in a disappointing fourth place at the 2016 World Championships, but has a good opportunity for some redemption here with a strong skate in Spokane. The U.S. Figure Skating Championships this year. She had a disappointing short program, but eight points down, came back and won the championship in such convincing fashion. You think that Gracie can beat anyone. Opening combination, triple lights, triple toe. The one she missed at Worlds, and she does it nicely today. Good opening. Forward in the landing, that triple loop. Combination double axle, triple toe, well done. Technically strong, choreographically very immaculate. Everything is just so. Choreographed by Lori Nickel. Done so many incredible programs in the past. Triple flip, nicely done into double toe loop. Second half of this program is loaded, trying to get as many points in the bonus as possible. Triple lads, beautifully landed. That one jump just changed her energy so much. She's just free, skating free now. Knowing the rest of this program is completely within her control.
Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lacey Cole. The audience on their feet here in the Spokane Arena for the U.S. champion, Gracie Gold. And Scott, this was the kind of performance she was hoping for at the World Championships, but it's gotta feel good to end the season this way. Jump she missed at the opening of her program in Boston at the World Championships was this combination right here. Good speed coming out of the triple lots and a nice landing on the triple toe loop. And that set the stage for a solid program. Again, double axle, two and a half revolutions, right into a triple toe loop. Ah, hangs on to the landing there. Combination, second half of her program. Triple flip right here, totally straight in the air. Good speed coming out, a double toe loop there. Looked like she was going for another double toe and said, eh, maybe not. Gracie Gold in the kiss and cry with a satisfied smile after her free skate for Team North America. Now we'll see what the judges thought. I think they're gonna like it. Gracie's score. And you're absolutely right, Scott. 142 to put her currently into first place, and those are some valuable points for Team North America. And here we take a look at the current team standings. Team North America bolstered by that performance by Gracie Gold with 644.07 points, overtaking Team Europe and followed by Team Asia in third place. But some wonderful performances to come. And let's head down now to Tracy, who's with Gracie Gold. You can just see the smile on our face. You could see the energy, the emotion you skated with out there to finish off the season like that has got to feel good for you. You know, it, it really, it felt great. Um, you know, that second jumping pass after I was a little tight and I put my hand down, I thought the last thing Frank told me before I left was just to skate with joy. Like just have, have some fun. Just, relax but just like have some have a good firebird and i just decided to let go and like whatever i'm here for my team but i'm also here for spokane and for u.s figure skating and co saver putting on this amazing event you mention your team and this is a unique event and you're skating alongside your rivals and you have everyone supporting you just to come back here after a skate like that and get that support from your team how much did that mean to you I mean, it just, I think it makes so much sense, at least for North America, to have Canada and U.S. on the same side. You know, I mean, it helps, obviously, that we speak the same language, have the same culture, but we're so close. And then a competition, it's like, oh, no, wait. Sorry, we can't hang out. Like, Canadians, like, secret high fives. But to have it on the same team, it feels shockingly natural. Well, congratulations on a great performance today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Our next competitor competes on behalf of Team Asia. He's from China, Huyang Jin. So a chance now for the brand new world bronze medalist to make his mark here at the Kosei Team Challenge Cup. It's Boyan Jin for Team Asia. And at just 18 years old, he's already made history twice this season. Last month, he became the first ever Chinese men's competitor to win a world medal. Team Asia needs a big score, a huge score. And this is the guy that can do it. Four quads in this program, the first man in the world to do that. Three different quads. Opening with quadruple Lutz. Wow, that was so big he couldn't control the landing. All right, 
down into his next quad. He's going to have to calm down after that first miss and just try to land this one cleanly. And he doesn't, is not able to hang on to that landing. He was just a little too tight coming down. So two mistakes right now in a very important program for Team Asia. Triple Axe on a fall. Oh, this is disastrous for Team Asia. They needed him to skate cleanly, and he's not. Surprising after the year he's had, he's been on fire all season with these jumps. To your point, Scott, Boyan has been so consistent all season long, but an interesting element of this event is that team aspect and the accountability. And it's interesting to imagine how that would play on your nerves, knowing, as you mentioned, how much his team is reliant on his scores. Been there, done that. Epic fail. <laughs> so I know probably what he's feeling right now. It's just the weight of the team. You want to skate great just to lift up your team and to open up in his thir first three jumping passes with three misses is so unusual and devastating. Two more quads coming up. Quad toe, he needs to calm down. Just land this and he does. There's no way to describe how much physical strength and quality it takes to do this many quads in a program. One is hard. And oh, it turned out of that one as well. Sometimes when you try too hard, you lose touch with the ice. It's, it's finesse as much as it is power. Another easy jump for him, a step out. It's almost like he gripped this program so tight. He was just he just squeezing it so hard that he lost touch with the ice. And unfortunately, he's just not yet the type of skater who can get away with having technical mistakes and rely on his artistry or skating skills. Uh, he's working on it, but he's still got a long way to go. But he's a brilliant technician. And this is a program he's going to want back. When Team Asia needed it the most. Three-time Chinese national champion and world bronze medalist Boyang Jin for Team Asia. This is the first he's shown signs of slowing down all season long. Boyang Jin. Undeniably a bright future ahead of this talented teenager from Harbin, China. But as you mentioned, Scott, not the performance he was hoping for tonight. He has the best quad Lutz in the world, and this one just got away from him. A little bit of an a rotation. Tried a little bit too hard. He might have gotten just a little too much air. Could not control the landing. 
Quad Sao again, couldn't, couldn't control the landing, just gripped it a little bit too tight and was tilted forward. But you can see the quality is jumping. Look at the air and look how quick he is in the air on this quad toe. One, two, three, four, down and into an easy double toe loop. Sitting next to the team captain, Shizuka Arakawa, the 2006 Olympic champion in ladies figure skating. And now we have the scores. And here are the scores for Team Asia's Boyang Jin. It's for 156.71. So it's good enough to put him currently into first place, but certainly not the best that he can do. It's a nice time to have the support of your teammates in moments like this. Coming up next, U.S. men's champion Adam Rippon. We'll be back with more of the Kosei Team Challenge Cup after this. Beautiful Spokane, Washington. Nicknamed Skate City USA is now the host to the inaugural Kosei Team Challenge Cup. The event kicked off with a red carpet event at the Northern Quest Resort and Casino featuring skating's biggest stars. Away from the ice, this is a city that embraces the outdoors. Visitors can take in views of the second largest waterfall in the country and hike one of Spokane's many trails. Spokane is a perfect blend of outdoor living, a downtown atmosphere, and best of all, world-class figure skating. Welcome back to Spokane and the Kosei Team Challenge Cup. Scott caught up with North America's team captain, Christy Yamaguchi. With captain of Team North America, Olympic champion Christy Yamaguchi. Now you've got some pretty intense rivalries within your team. Mm -hmm. how's, how's that working? Yeah, I think in a situation like this, it's... Um, you know, it's great to have those rivalries. It's only natural in skating, but this is going to be interesting. I think it's, it's great for the relationships. And, uh, you know, to have that, they're just going to push each other to be better. How's North America going to do? Well, I know there's a lot of confidence coming out of the Team Europe team captain, Christopher. Uh, but I'm going to have to challenge him on that and say I'm, I'm pretty confident that we have a very good chance of taking it. Good luck. Thank you. Next up for Team North America, it's the 2016 U.S. champion, Adam Rapon. At 26 years old, he was at the top of his game this season and capped it all off with a personal best skate at the World Championships last month, where he finished in sixth place. But his performance of this free skate brought the entire arena to its feet in Boston.
A year ago, Adam said he felt like he had been written off and decided that he wanted to change the conversation. And I think that's exactly what he's accomplished this season. Well, I've known him forever, and I've just watched him grow and develop over the years. And, you know, before it was, there was always that take the next step. Oh, we got to get, we're so close. He always had it artistically. And now, I think due to his coaching, he's, he's really pulling it together. He's become a solid technical skater as well. Quad Lutz has become kind of a staple for him, and he was the first man to land it in competition in U.S. history. One, two, three, four. Came down short of the rotation, could not hang on to the landing. Lost a lot of points on that because of the under rotation. The rip on Lutz, look at those both arms above his head. It changes the center of balance. So difficult to do. And this jump that used to give him fits, but now he totally owns and operates. Triple axe, look at the ease of the rotation and the control on the landing. Adam Rapon from Team North America needs 124.66 points to push his team yeah. into the lead. He might get that. <laughs> I think he just might. <laughs> 166.68. That puts Team North America at the top of the leaderboard with 810 points. A wonderful free skate from Adam Rapon. And here's a look at those current team standings. And indeed, North America is atop the leaderboard, followed by Team Europe and Team Asia. And let's check in now with Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks a lot, Madam. You just saw it. You saw the score. You helped your team take the lead. That's got to feel good right now. Tracy, it feels really good because I'm really tired. <laughs> But you know what, all of these guys, they worked so hard today. I'm so proud of them. You know, I had some mistakes today, but Megan and Eric, Kaylin Andrew, Nam, Gabby, Gracie, everybody, they put out really great performances. So that's what we're gonna continue to do right into the last crew. Well, you were working at, out there. You were working the crowd, you were working the box. We saw it, how much fun were you having? Just trying to enjoy this final skate. That's exactly right. I was just trying to enjoy this final skate. You know, I saw some people on their feet and that's exactly what my goal was. It was to get the people on their feet and to make my teammates proud today. What was it like knowing that this was your final time you were going to skate that free program? Oh yeah, and so you know what, I wanted to end it on a really good note and um, no better note than to be surrounded by all my friends. Yay! Congratulations. Thanks Tracy, or from Spokane after this. Welcome back inside the Spokane Arena. I'm Tana Dwight as the final group of men's and ladies competitors take to the ice for their warm up together. And for more on that, let's head down ringside with Scott Hamilton. There's so many wonderful, kind of unique innovations in this Team Challenge Cup. And one of them is that the men and the women warm up on the same ice. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal. They probably skate together with men and women when they practice, but in competition, it's a lot different. Jumping lanes are different. Warm-up styles are different. There could be a few traffic issues that could cause distraction. The other innovation is none of these skaters in this group knew when they were going to skate until the standings came out after the last skater. Team North America will close the show in the men's and ladies. And what that means is Jason Brown coming off that injury will have to anchor position. And Ashley Wagner will close the show after the reigning world champion. Pretty exciting stuff. Let's go to Tracy. Thanks a lot, Scott. And I'm here with Christopher and Dean. And you competed, but now you're on the other side of it, being a captain of this team. What's this experience been like for you? Oh, it's been a great experience. I have to say the camaraderie between the teams has been great with, with all of the continents. But I have to say, I think Team Europe's been the loudest. <laughs> Well, I saw you earlier dancing with Christy Yamaguchi. Yeah, but we were having a bit of a dance off. I also heard there's been a lot of trash talking amongst you guys as well. Is yeah, that true? Ma mostly on Christy's behalf. Yeah, I, I tried to keep uh, above the fray. Well, North America just took the lead down the stretch here. Did you have some final words for your team, especially with the world champion still yet to skate for Team Europe? Yeah, no, I think she's going to be solid out there, but there's still a lot of great skaters, and I think it's going to be really up in the air 
of where, uh, where we're going to finish in the end. But we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Appreciate it. Thanks so Thank much. You. And here's a look at the start order for these final groups of men's and ladies kicking things off. It's Shoma Uno of Japan and Team Asia. And then rounding things out, Ashley Wagner for Team North America. We'll have all of the top skaters when we come back.